If you're thinking of retiring from the U.S. or a Western country and moving overseas, then Southeast Asia may be one of the places you're thinking about. Lots of surveys and lists tout Thailand as the, one of the best places for retirees, but what about Laos? It shares a similar food, culture, and climate, but it's not as well known. Is Lao missing something, or is it just a best-kept secret? Let's talk about what I think are some of the key differences and similarities and let you decide. Hello everyone, my name is Javier and a year ago my wife and I sold everything and moved from the US to Southeast Asia to retire. We've been living in Laos for the past year. Over the past month, we've been traveling through the Isan region of Thailand. I've been traveling back and forth between the States and Asia for the past 20 years, so I'm pretty familiar with most aspects of life in Southeast Asia. But every day is still a surprise, and uh, it's a fascinating place to live. All right, so let's get into it. We're going to talk about the seven key aspects of life in Thailand versus Laos and how that might have impact your decision to retire in one of those two countries. So the first one is language. The languages of Lao and Thai are very similar. In fact, the people of the Isan region uh, speak a, a dialect that can be well spoken and understood by the Lao people. And most Lao can speak uh, and understand the Thai spoken word. So if you speak Thai, you can pretty much get by in Lao. Not always the other way around though. There are certain Lao phrases and words that are not in the Thai language, so uh, they don't translate back the other way. Now in terms of English, uh, English is prevalent through most of Thailand. In fact, most of the major tourist cities uh, in most of those cities in Thailand uh, English will be pretty common, so it's easy to get by if you're in one of those areas. Lao it can be a little bit trickier if you're outside the major cities. Uh, English is not as prevalent, so it can be harder maybe to communicate. What I would recommend is if you learn some basic uh, phrases in the local language enough to get by, people are very, uh, very much willing to help, incredibly helpful. Yeah, and so uh, you generally won't have a problem. And even now you can use your phone with Google Translate, those sorts of things. But if you're looking at the two differences, uh, English is more prevalent in Thailand versus Lao. One of the interesting things about Lao is because of the French colonial influence back in the early 1900s, you'll still see some signs, uh, street signs, and on government buildings in French. And the older Lao locals actually may speak uh, French more commonly than they will English, which is pretty interesting. All right, moving on to the second aspect of life in Thailand versus Lao, that's food and restaurants. Thailand and Lao both share similarities in the flavors. So that's the sweet, salty, uh, spicy, sour, and bitter to a lesser extent. So you'll taste some of the similarities in the food. In my opinion, Lao food has got more of a punch, so the flavors tend to be stronger, especially the sour and the spicy. And there is something in, in Lao cuisine called badek, that's the fermented fish paste, which gives Lao food a certain earthy type flavor, which is pretty unmistakable. It's hard to not taste that if you're, if you're not used to it. Uh, food in both countries can be pretty adventurous. In fact, I'd recommend if your adventure is going to a local outdoor market where you can see some of the fresh vegetables, the tropical fruit, and some of the other uh, snacks, which can be pretty interesting and strange. Because Lao does not have a coastline like Thailand does, you won't see seafood as plentiful in Lao. But a common staple in Lao food is freshwater fish. So you see a lot of that in the Lao diet, as well as freshwater crabs, those sorts of things. Steamed rice is popular in Thailand, where sticky rice is more popular in Lao. Sticky rice is term referred to as khao niao, and it's eaten rolled up and really it kind of as a way to scoop up the food that you're eating or dip into chili sauce. It's a fun way to eat. I actually prefer 
County Al. Pretty good stuff. If you have a craving for Western foods, uh, Western fast food in particular, like McDonald's and KFC, then Thailand is your is your place. You won't find as much of the Westernized fast food places in Laos. I think now we've got a Starbucks, and you will see Dairy Queen in Laos, but that's pretty much it in terms of westernized fast food. Although you can find some pretty decent international food options in the capital city of Yangshan. So still lots of pretty diverse selection of food. One thing that Lao food has that Thailand doesn't is the French influence. You can find some pretty fantastic bakeries with all kinds of great French pastries and croissants, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, so make for a good breakfast in the morning. And of course, Lao coffee. Uh, Lao coffee is uh, renowned. It's uh, one of the best, in my opinion. And in addition to the pastries, you'll also find in the street stalls uh, the French-influenced baguette sandwiches, locally called kao chi, uh, similar to a banh mi sandwich. Pretty good stuff. Highly recommend. All right, so next let's talk about culture. So. In both Laos and Thailand, Buddhism plays a pretty important part of life. It's the predominant religion, and so you see that pretty central to the culture in both countries. In my opinion, I believe that Laos is, uh, is in general more conservative than Thailand, and you see that uh, play a big part in the culture in Laos, in, in everything from the music to the fashion, the way people dress, in fact, in Lao, you, you'll still see uh, women wear the traditional Lao skirts on their way to work in the morning. You'll see Lao is similar to what Thailand might have been like 30 years ago in terms of the pace of life and kind of the way that people live. Uh, in my opinion, that's a part of the charm of Lao. It's, it's really a very laid back country in general, even the capital city of Yangshan is uh, more like uh, a large town versus uh, the capital of a country. In my opinion, that's that's what makes Laos so, such a special place. That's slowly changing though, as more development comes into the country. Fourth on my list is the landscape. The biggest difference between Thailand and Laos in terms of landscape is the coastline. So Thailand has the ocean front coastline with the white sand beaches. And in Lao, you've got the karst mountains that cut through the countryside, which is pretty amazing, as well as the waterfalls. There are so many stunning waterfalls in, in Lao. So I'd like to describe Lao as more of an eco-tourist's paradise because it's more of an untouched country, in my opinion, in terms of tourism. Lao is, uh, in my opinion, a much more rugged country in terms of the landscape. Okay, so number five on the list is transportation and infrastructure. Uh, in general, traveling around Thailand is pretty easy. It's the state of the road system in Thailand is very well maintained, so it's very easy to get around. They've also got a pretty decent train system and a domestic airline system that with pretty cheap flights. You can get around the country in Thailand pretty easily. Uh, Lao is a little bit trickier. The, the, I'd say the infrastructure is not as well developed in the country of Lao. Roads are poorly maintained, although it is getting better. It can be a little bit tricky uh, driving on some of the uh, less maintained roads, especially if you're outside of the major cities. A high-speed train was just completed in Lao, so it's now making it easier to travel from central Lao or the capital up to uh, northern Laos of the Vong Vien and Long Prabang areas. And in Laos there's only one domestic carrier so it can make domestic travel a little bit expensive since there's not really any competition. Driving can be tricky in either country, Laos or Thailand. I think you'll find that traffic rules are more guidelines than hard and fast rules. The key is just to go with the flow of traffic rather than make any rash decisions. I think that's that's one thing that I've seen in, in either country. Driving in Thailand, for Americans anyway, can be a little bit challenging because we drive on the left side of the road, so that can take a little bit of getting used to. Whereas in Laos, we drive on the right side of the road, so it can make it maybe easier and more comfortable driving. Driving at night 
is, in my opinion, dangerous. That if driving in Thailand is considered dangerous, then driving in Wow is outright terrifying. But I think it's just a matter of getting used to you know, the way that people drive. The idea of yielding to traffic isn't a, a concept in Lao especially. And uh, from my experience, people are generationally newer drivers. So people are kind of evolving from you know, riding motorbikes to now driving in cars or trucks, still with the mentality of a uh, motorbike. So uh, people think they can dart in and out of traffic, you know, those sorts of things. In Thailand, you tend to see a little bit more experienced drivers. One thing that I've seen a, a positive is that there is no road rage or very little. People that tend to be pretty tolerant of, of other people's driving and considerate, especially. So you very rarely see or hear people using their car horns, which I think is a pretty good thing. It's number six on our list. In either Lao or Thailand, uh, visitors from the US or Canada can stay up to 30 days with a, a tourist visa or visa on arrival. So that makes it pretty easy. Um, in Laos, I would recommend using the e-visa option. It just makes it easier when you're coming through. But either way, it's generally pretty straightforward to get in, at least for those countries in North America. For longer term stay, Thailand has several visa options, most of which require proof of sufficient funds. For Laos, there is no formal retirement visa, but there are many visa options for those that are interested in long-term stay in the country. Uh, there are things such as an investor visa, if you're interested in uh, starting your own business in the country. There's also something called an, an LAB2 visa, which means that you're sponsored by a Lao company and you're given a 12-month resident status within the country. It's a popular choice for foreigners that are staying in Lao long term and it's uh, renewable at a cost of between five and six hundred dollars depending on whether you are also attaching a work permit or not to that long-term resident visa. The nice thing about the long-term resident visa that you have for Lao is that it also enables you to then open up a Lao bank account get a driver's license, and also apply for a multiple entry visa to Thailand. As a tourist going into Thailand, from a, at least from a Western country, you're only allowed two land crossings per year. But with a multiple entry visa, six month multiple entry visa to, to Thailand, gives you those un unlimited land crossings, which is pretty nice and convenient. So I'll drop a link to a, an agent that's pretty well known for the country of Lao, if you're interested. I think if you look at the two, in terms of complexity and overall management, Lao, I would say is, is the, the better option. People tend to gravitate to, to Thailand for visas just because of everything that they've heard in terms of retirement visas. So do your own research. Uh, but I'm giving you kind of the general information as, as I understand it. And so my seventh and final aspect of life between Thailand and Laos in terms of retirement is cost of living, the most important one. So cost of living in either Thailand or Laos is far less than it is in North America. On average, it's said that you can trim your budget to between 40 to 60% of whatever you're spending in in the U.S. Um, Thailand consistently appears on lists for the cheapest places to retire in the world. Frankly, in my opinion, I think Laos is very similar in cost. Uh, you just don't hear about it enough. So again, I think it is one of the best kept secrets of Southeast Asia. There are some, some differences. And so I'll note that because Laos is, has a need to import a lot of uh, their goods, especially electronics, those sorts of goods can be uh, higher costs than in Thailand. Rental costs also can be higher in Laos uh, versus Thailand for the same living standard. If you're looking at rent an apartment, I've got a video on apartment rental costs that you can watch to get more detail on that. Other things in Laos can be actually far more competitive and cheaper in cost. So if you're eating local food from a local restaurant or drinking the Lao beer from a, a local place, 
then the costs for those sorts of things can, can be far cheaper than they are in Thailand. I've got a video that I'm, I'll be putting together around our costs for the past three days on traveling in Thailand, and I'll compare that to our cost of living in Laos, so you'll be able to see that. So in general, I think the cost of living between Thailand and Laos is, is a wash. Honestly, I think they're pretty comparable. Okay, so those were my seven key aspects of life between Thailand and Laos. If you're looking at retiring from North America or a Western country or really anywhere in the world, these are some of the things that you should have in consideration. No matter what you are thinking of doing, I would highly recommend spending some time in either country. Think about what's really important to you. Let's say spend a month in, in Thailand and travel around get to know what it's like doing just day-to-day -day living. Same for Lao. Spend a month, if you can, in Lao and start in a major city just so you don't get as much culture shock. Uh, but I, yeah, I would highly recommend doing that before you commit to either, to either place. And as others have probably said, please, please, please don't do anything that would um, that would keep you in, in one spot. Make sure that you're, you're flexible, at least in your first year or so, so that you can, you can easily change and make the decisions as you need to. All right, so as always, thank you for watching. Really appreciate those viewers that are watching our videos. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And let me know what you think about life in Thailand or Lao, or let me know what you're thinking or have heard about life either way. All right, thanks, and we will see you in the next video.